one place on the saddle which has been neglected for years is the width of the channel. That has to be three men's fingers, probably four women's fingers wide, as a, as a rule of thumb, under the, under the centre of the saddle, running all the way through. Many, many saddles, you can get no more than two fingers towards the candle, where they run in a lot narrower. That's because the tree's a little narrower back there, and they've allowed the panel to be a little bigger at the expense of the width of the channel. However, some saddlers have made the width of the channel quite wide through there, a good four fingers, but they don't have enough width in the panel to support the saddle properly, so that becomes a pressure point. The reason that we need all this width through the centre is if you want to get any vertical flexion out of your horse, he has to be able to round his back and lift the spinous processes up into the recess in the saddle. If it's too tight there, he's going to want to drop his back end away and riders have a big problem not being able to bring the horse's hindquarters underneath them or round the back up or lift the back correctly. Also, if it's too tight, you're going to lose a lot of lateral flexion. When you ask your horse to bend, if the channel's too narrow, it's going to pinch and impinge on the spinous processes. So if we go back to the beginning, when I talked about the saddle, it was fitting, and then after two or three years, it wasn't fitting anymore. Let's look at the reason why. As the horse moves, they move from the hindquarters they load a little more weight to the hindquarters, they lift themselves in front, they lighten up in the front end, their back lifts and rounds. So if we've made a saddle to fit a hollow back, and as that horse moves, and you can see this, look at a horse when he does move, when he's walking. Yeah, he'll put his leg for his, his head forward, drop his head a little, but as he does that, his back comes up. He uses his hindquarters, and his back comes up, and he drops his head down. That means he lifts the saddle. If the saddle's too tight, that's going to cause him to hollow out and lift his head and drop his back. If you have the saddle fitting evenly and distribute the weight all the way through his back, it doesn't pinch any longer, then he's going to be able to lift his back and drop his head and use his back correctly. And eventually, over a period of time, his back's going to develop bigger and rounder. That's why the saddle that's been made to fit the dropped or hollowed back uh, with a curve or sweep in it, it's not going to fit that horse for too long because he's going to be quite comfortable with it and be able to lift his back and work comfortably until, until such a stage as his back becomes fuller and straighter, then that curved shape's not going to fit anymore. The positioning of the saddle on the horse's back is extremely important as to how the saddle rides on the horse and how the horse performs. As a rough rule of thumb or as a guide, your, your hand should fit between his elbow and the front edge, leading edge of the girth. So you'll get approximately four inches, maybe five inches. Um, from the top of the saddle, if you pick the horse's foreleg up from under the knee, pulling his leg up, the, the shoulder, you should feel the scapula rotate back and brush the front of the saddle. It shouldn't be interfered with by the saddle. That's in the correct spot. If you look at the horse in profile, you should be in the centre of the seat and that should drop down where you'd sit on that horse bareback. I see many, many people sit the saddle up as close as they can onto the shoulder where they think the horse's centre of centre of uh, gravity, in theory, should be. In fact, what you're doing is loading the front end of the horse. From where I've said the girth should sit, the horse carries 65% of his weight on the forehand. If you put your saddle forward of that line and you get up over the front of the horse, then you're putting the horse heavy onto his forehand and you want his backhand to be carrying his front end. You're making it even harder work for the horse than it, than it has to be. And he's going to tire in the loins and get really sore in the hind quarters. If you look at where you would be sitting in this position, you'll be sitting right on the knifey part of the wither, and it'll be just about impossible to sit there anyway. The horse would shift you back with his shoulders and just the natural contour of his body and the way he works. So there's no point in trying to get up over the front of the horse or over his wither. All you're doing is loading his front end. Of all the client, with all the clients I see with saddle fitting problems, apart from the problem of incorrect width or maybe the saddle's bridging, or something physical with a saddle, incorrect positioning of a saddle would be the single most, the biggest saddle fitting problem that there is. The question I'm often asked is how should the saddle sit? So I guess I'll try to explain now. The saddle should sit well balanced on the horse's back with the lowest point, the middle of the seat being the lowest point. So the candle height and the pommel height have nothing to do with how the saddle's actually fitting. It's the low point, the centre of the seat it's important to keep the saddle balanced. The If you look, you stand in front of the horse and look down along his back, look at the front of the saddle, lift the flap, you should be able to locate the point of the tree. That width, 
that angle of the point of the tree should be the same angle as that of the horse's back from the center of the horse's back to the turn of the ribs as as we've explained before if that's too narrow the saddle's never going to fit if it's a little wider that's acceptable you can use a pad and the horse will lift into that if you look at the horse look at the saddle in profile without the saddle being girthed up hold the saddle with one hand and you slide the hand your other hand free hand under the sweat flap to where the panel sits and is located along the horse's back the panel should be sitting evenly and fitting evenly all the way along with even pressure check down the channel make sure you have complete clearance from the front to the back and if you can feel that the panel is sitting along the contour of the horse's back not bridging or gaping away from the horse's back under the center of the seat neither should the saddle be rocking or pivoting in the middle with the with the back or cantle end of the saddle lifting up off the horse's back or a lot of clearance under the front you should be able to put your hand on the cantle of the saddle you shouldn't be able to rock the saddle or make it pivot it should sit there quite steadily as a guide to where the saddle should sit i use the hand when placing the saddle on the horse's back hold your hand with your fingers under the top of the panel near the channel and your thumb on top as you lay the saddle on the horse's back your wrist would sit against the back of the horse's shoulder this will give from the point of the tree to the back of the scapula if you if you lift the flap and look at the saddle from the point of the tree to the back of the scapula will give you approximately something between three to four inches of movement the girth should fall down on the line you have something from the back of the elbow to the leading edge of the girth something like four to five inches the length of the saddle is important too you'll find the panel will sit they'll tell you no further than the last rib however there's no real pressure at the end of the saddle and it can go a little past the last rib the last rib covers the kidneys they are protected and they can extend back a little further in the lumbar section of the spine there are transverse processes so there is a little bit of support there but not really right back on the horse's loin it's not a good idea to have your saddle loaded up with a lot of weight there